But doesn't it further wear down credibility when you put someone who's under state, local, federal, and international investigation as a representative of Are your you party on committees? I'm talking about George no, Santos, I, uh, representative from well, New York. We should have that discussion. So let's have that discussion. You want to bring up S Santos, and let's talk about the institution itself, because I agree wholeheartedly that Congress is broken. And I think, you're, I think your listeners or viewers should understand what proxy voting was, because it never took place in Congress But I'm asking before. you about George Santos. I know you asked me a question. Let me because ask you. Because you could put it to a vote. You to asked me a question. Ask I'd appreciate if you let me answer. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And did you expect Kevin McCarthy to have any morals or concerns about ethics? Because if you did, this interview will shut that all down for you. Congress is broken based upon what has transpired in the last Congress. The American public wasn't able to come in to see us. People voted by proxy, meaning you didn't have to show up for work. Mm -hmm. Bills didn't go have to go through committee. So what I'm trying to do is open the people's house back for the people so their voice is there, so people are held accountable. So now, as I just had in the last week, for the first time yeah. in seven years, every member got to vote. If now, you got a third of your caucus to vote to I oust could, him, you could do so. Do you, do you don't think you could get your Republicans to do that? I wasn't finished answering the question. So... Like a career politician, McCarthy has the art of dodging a question down pretty well and really won't touch on why he's just so okay with George Santos and the constant saga that we now have to see come about with all these lies and fraud. One of the main complaints, which has been used time and time again, was the notion of proxy voting. And as you can imagine with a pandemic, people weren't able to be in and out of the Capitol. Of course, that didn't stop the January Sixers, now did it? If every single new person brought into Congress was elected by their constituents, what their constituents have done has lend their voice to the American public. So those members can all serve on committee. Now, what I'm trying to do is change some of these committees as well. Like the Intel Committee is different than so any other committee. So you're just not going to answer the question I asked. Well, no, I, no, you don't get to question whether I answer it. You asked a question. I'm trying to get you through that. I don't think you've that. said the name George Santos like once. <laughs> and whether or not someone like McCarthy ever took COVID seriously is now ultimately irrelevant. As the new house led by him put Marjorie Trainwreck Green on the panel to investigate COVID policies. It almost seems like a joke and a jab at Democrats for McCarthy on who he will put on committees just to make getting the job done even harder. So but talking, you know what? I you're just, talking about proxy but, voting but, no, no, and no. other things. But you, no, you started the question with Congress was broken, and I agreed with no, you. But I was Congress. answering the question mm -hmm. of how Congress Congress is broken and how we're changing it. So if I can okay. finish the question that you asked me, how Congress is broken, I equated every yep. single member they just got elected by their by their mm -hmm. constituents, they have a right to serve. His main argument is that the voters of Santos District voted him in, and so he gets the right to serve. But many from his district, including the county Republicans, have called for him to resign. The Nassau County GOP leadership has been very clear that he is not a welcomed member, and they have echoed the same concern from the voters who feel lied to and deceived. There's quite a bit of irony in that McCarthy has humored all of the MAGA GOP members and their, quote, concerns about the 2020 election and voters not trusting the system. But when it's a member of their party and ultimately their control of the House, McCarthy isn't too worried about the sanctity of the vote or the lies that his members seem to tell. And of course, McCarthy will throw in a dig or two at Democrats because no one in his party could ever confront the real issues or stay true to any bit of morals. Just like any alleged collusion on the part of his former BFF Donald Trump didn't really seem to bother him. Now he has some concerns over Eric Swalwell from his state of California. If it makes anything clear from this interview, and any that McCarthy has done since narrowly getting away with being Speaker, it's that all of their supposed concerns and all that for the American people garbage will be nothing but talking points. McCarthy has used his position to strip Democrats of their places on their committees while giving assignments to those under investigation for all kinds of unsavory behavior. Even those who voted against McCarthy were given seats on the Judiciary and Oversight Committees. It's all about that power to lead the House and derail any positive legislation in any ways that they can. And McCarthy is hell-bent on making the next two years of the Biden administration as ineffective as possible. And that's a fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.